All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna demonstrate some flexor calculations using this flexor formula. I'm given an internal bending moment, which I probably got from a moment diagram and the cross-section geometry. And what we're gonna do is look at various bending stress calculations at multiple points on the cross sections and then uh, we're going to draw the bending stress distribution and then calculate different force resultants. I'm going to compare two cross sections here so it's like I'm thinking about a beam that's built with a solid rectangular cross section that's 200 by 75 versus a beam made with a hollow rectangular cross section that has a height of 200 millimeters and a width of 75 millimeters and the walls are 10 millimeters thick. All right, so one of the first things that we want to do whenever we're dealing with the bending formula is determine cross section or geometric properties. And that usually means getting the centroid and the moment of inertia. And for this cross section, since everything is symmetric, I have two lines of symmetry. So really the centroid is right in the middle. And that's important too, because knowing where the centroid is is important because that tells us where our neutral axis is. And our bending moment is gonna be applied like this. Here is M. It's causing compression at the top, tension at the bottom and that means our bending is happening about the horizontal axis of the cross section so here I, I want to find the moments of inertia about this neutral axis as well and so for the solid rectangular cross section you know it's just a rectangle here so I'm gonna have you know a popular formula that you probably memorize from statics or you find on the inside cover of your book this would just be 1 12th the base times the height cubed which is 50 million millimeters to the fourth and then here for the cross section on the right the hollow one I have again a symmetric cross section the holes also share the same centroid so I can take the outside minus the void or the the hole so this would be minus the hole the moment of inertia of the hole which is also a rectangle and this gives me 23.27 million millimeters to the fourth. All right, so now that I know the, the centroid and the moment of inertia of my cross section, I can go ahead and apply the flexor formula to calculate stresses at different locations on the, along the height of the cross section. So let's start with the solid cross section. Here's the flexor formula. You know, the moment applies for the entire cross section. This is a positive internal bending moment because it causes compression at the top. And I want to calculate the normal stress due to this bending moment at the top of the cross section at the neutral axis and at the bottom. And so what's changing is the distance from the neutral axis to the location where I want to calculate their stress. So for the top, the Y value is a positive 100 millimeters. And so now I just plug and chug to my bending formula. The normal stress at the top is equal to divided by the moment of inertia, which we calculated earlier. So I also got to do some unit conversions. I've got a kilonewton here. I'll convert that to newtons. And I see a meter here, and I'm going to convert that meter into millimeters. And you'll see that this group right here, this is actually just 10 to the 6. And that cancels with that right there. Hey, that's convenient. All right. And just to make sure we know, we've got kilonewtons that are canceling out, and the meters and the meters cancel out there as well. So I'm going to get an answer in newtons per millimeter squared. I get negative 50 newtons per millimeter squared. And one newton per millimeter squared is also one megapascal. So this is the same as negative 50 megapascals. And the negative just means that I've got 50 megapascals in compression. At the neutral axis, y is equal to zero. And that means my normal stress at the neutral axis is just zero. And then at the bottom, y bottom is equal to negative 100 millimeters. And here, the normal stress is, and the difference is that I put negative 100 millimeters here. And with all my unit conversions, and this will give me a positive 50 megapascals, which is 50 megapascals in tension. I see that my cross section is experiencing compression at the top or everywhere above the neutral axis. And then it goes to tension everywhere below the neutral axis. And if I look at the flexure formula right here, I can see that, well, you know, this M and I are constant over the cross section. So the bending stress varies linearly with respect to Y. 
then I could draw a bending stress distribution. And this stress distribution is actually a 3D plot that would look something like this. So here's the cross section. This moment is acting like this on the cross section. And the neutral axis is here, right in the middle. It's really a plane. It's a neutral axis plane. And at the very top, we're experiencing compression. This has an intensity of 50 megapascals. And it varies linearly from the neutral axis. It is zero at the neutral axis. So the very bottom is experiencing tension. And at the very bottom, there's an intensity of 50 MPa. And you can see how the, the blue arrows are pulling away from the surface of the, of the cross section, whereas the red arrows are pushing into the cross section. And that's what we have. Now, it's difficult to draw a 3D representation every time. You know, that's a lot of work to do that. So a lot of times what we do, we'll draw a stress profile, which is essentially kind of the side view as if I'm an observer that's standing here. So instead of a three-dimensional representation, you might see a 2D representation, a side view of the stress distribution that we might call a stress profile. And we would call this the normal stress distribution due to the bending moment. And I can use this stress distribution to actually calculate the bending stress at any location on my cross section. So for instance, if I wanted the stress here, which would be 75 millimeters from the neutral axis, well, I could either plug and chug back to my bending formula or I could say, hey, this point right here is 75 millimeters and this distance is 100 millimeters. And by kind of basically ratios or similar triangles, the sigma A, sigma A over 75 is equal to 50 MPa over 100 millimeters. And this would tell me sigma A is 37.5 MPa in tension. And I could do that for any point on the cross section. Hey, all right, so that's the solid cross section. Let's take a look at the hollow cross section to see how it's different. And really, the process is identical. It doesn't matter what the cross section is. The only difference is that the moment of inertia that we're going to be using is smaller. And what we should expect from this and just from the bending formula is that our stress values are going to go up. All right, so here's my hollow cross section. The only thing that's different between this and the solid cross section is the hole. We want to calculate the normal stress due to this bending moment at the top the neutral axis and the bottom. And at the top, just like before, the distance from the neutral axis to the top is a positive 100 millimeters. And my bending formula, and this time we get negative 107.4 megapascals as compared to the 50 megapascals that we got. And we expect that, you know, our, we, we basically halved the moment of inertia. So we, we pretty much ended up doubling the stress at this location. And then at the neutral axis, Y is still zero. So the normal stress due to bending at the neutral axis is zero. And at the bottom, we should get this 107.4 megapascals again but in tension. And that's because the distance from the neutral axis to the bottom is defined as negative 100 millimeters. All right, so our stresses are bigger because of the hollow cross section and the lower moment of inertia. Now, our stress distribution, our stress can only act where there's material. And so instead of looking like this, uh, our bending stress distribution will actually have some holes in it and it would look like this. Hopefully you can start seeing how like the stress block really just kind of takes the shape of the cross section. Damn, that's like a work of art, son. <laughs> All right, seriously, it looks like a split second here, but shoot, it took me like 17 minutes to draw that thing. <laughs> Damn. So that's what the 3D stress profile looks like due to the bending moment. It's more convenient to draw a two-dimensional stress profile. We're only gonna see the side of it so here's my normal stress profile due to my bending moment. And if I wanted to calculate the normal stress at the bottom of the flange right here, which is 10 millimeters from the top, that location is 90 millimeters from the neutral axis. I'll call that point A. I could plug and chug back into my bending formula, or I could just use similar triangles or ratios. 
right? And that's that's really just 90 over 100 times 107.4. And that will tell me that the normal stress there at the bottom of the flange at what I'm calling point A is 96.66 in compression. All right, so hopefully you have a good sense of how to calculate stresses along the height of a cross section and drawing the bending stress distribution, whether it's in 3D or 2D, and then how you can use that stress profile to calculate stresses as well. Another question that we often get is to calculate the force resultant associated with the bending stress distribution. And it's really just a volume calculation. And so for instance here, if I wanted the compression force resultant, I'm trying to calculate the volume of this triangular lock all the way across here. And this compression force resultant which I'll call C, is technically the stress integrated over the area, but we have a triangle and, and then I take this area and then extrude it over the width of the cross section. And so this is just one half base here, which is 100 millimeters times the height, which would be the stress of 50 MPA. And then it's extruded over this width right here, which was 75 millimeters. And we know that an MPA is a Newton per millimeter squared. So when I finish calculating this, I'm gonna get a result in Newtons. And so this compression force resultant C is equal to, which is 187.5 kilonewtons like this and on the 2d stress profile we may describe the resultant as here C like this and you might kind of recall this like the idea of a of a force couple associated with moments maybe from statics and physics and there would be a tension force resultant and I know for a couple of reasons one I could calculate the volume of that blue triangular block right or I know from force equilibrium that the tension should equal compression which is 187.5 kilonewtons as well there's also a moment equilibrium and so there is a distance here and that distance it could be calculated as well in a couple of ways. That force couple, this tension and compression force resultant, when I take equilibrium of this section, should equal 25 kilonewton meters. The force resultant also acts at the centroid of this volume of the wedge, which in this case, because every, it's just a linear wedge here, if you will, this distance right here is actually one third of the 100. So this is like 33.33. And similarly here, which would make this 133.33 millimeters. All right, some interesting ideas there. You know, another question that you might get is for this hollow circular cross section, the question might be what is the force resultant in the flange? And and let's say we're talking about the compression flange, and that would be the stress volume associated with this area here, right there. And that would be here. So it'd be this kind of trapezoidal area that trapezoidal area spread out over the width of the cross section here. And the compression force resultant in the flange, this is just going to be, let's see, the area of the trapezoid, one half or the average of the uneven sides. In this case, that those are the stresses, so 107.4 plus 96.66 times a base of 10 millimeters times or extruded over the width of 75 millimeters, which is the same as 76.52 kilonewtons in compression. And that would be the force taken up in the flange area. All right, hopefully that was a helpful overview of bending stress calculations using some simple cross sections. You know, a lot of times as the cross sections get more complicated, the only challenge is calculating the moment of inertia and goodness if you can't calculate the moment of inertia well 
you only got yourself to blame <laughs> or your statics instructor. All right, take it easy. Short or